Hello there, welcome back. In this video I'm going to run through the various kit that I have on my different rifles to enable me to shoot at night. Now what I'm going to do with this video is I'm basically just going to sit here and talk to the camera whilst holding all the different rifles, explaining how they work and so on. But I'm also going to splice that in with some close-up footage. And those close-up shots should enable you to see the finer detail um, associated with these particular products. I don't want to waste time in this video, so I'm not going to explain the full details about this particular rifle or the other rifles. I'll put a brief description as I show them, and I'll put the full description about all the gear that's on each individual rifle in the video description. If you're interested in any of the gear that I'm going to be showing in this video, just check out the video description. You'll get the timestamps where everything's featured. You'll get links to other videos that may be of use, and you'll also get links to all the gear as well. So check that out. Just click show more, and the full video description will come up. Okay, on to rifle one. This one is an Anschutz 1517.17 HMR, or 0.17 HMR if you're in the US. I know you do say it differently to us in the UK. It's basically a very, very accurate medium range rifle and when I say medium range I'm talking up to about 150 yards yes there is videos on YouTube of people shooting at crazy distances with the 17 but 150 yards is still a very very good distance it's a good safe distance to shoot at now one of the most important thing this on the top is a very powerful flashlight powered by one 18650 battery And I think it's around about a thousand lumens, which is any amount bright enough for shooting out to 150 yards. And this basically just fits to the top of your scope using a little nylon screw. It's got a swivel and ball attachment here, which is adjustable, and that allows you to get the center of this very tight beam right in the middle of your crosshairs. And because it's got that tight beam, that is very important to get that right in the middle of your crosshairs because if it's off to the side, you're not looking into darkness, but you're looking into the less bright halo of the flashlight, which is no good. So it's adjustable, it's powerful, has different modes. So you've got your full-on beam there, which is about a thousand lumens. And using the little switch on the back here, you can switch it on, off. Or you can have a strobe effect. It's not too easy to get that strobe effect. Because you, you've kind of got to lift your hand up here. It does have a pressure switch as well. There's nowhere really convenient to fit that here. So I only use the on or off function. One minor down point with this particular design is this little tightening nut here. It does stick out a bit. It actually sticks out a little bit further than the bolt. So that can catch on your clothing. But apart from that, it's a very, very good setup. This would be my choice for long range rabbits and foxes. Now something with a little bit less whack, but a little bit more versatility, is the 2.2 LR Semi-Automatic. This one's got a high capacity mag, which is 25 shots, and I would tend to use this one for, again, nighttime shooting, and also shorter range shooting, anywhere up to 60, 70 yards or so. Again, you'll see videos on YouTube of people shooting at crazy distances with the 2.2. I tend to keep it realistic. And 50 to 60 yards is still a good distance, especially on a night. The Ruger 1022 doesn't really need any introduction. It's a bit of an everyman's rifle. They're all over the world. And I think in America, there's currently about 25 billion of these. Although I may be exaggerating there. This one, is fitted with my very newest flashlight. And this one is a Warrior M22. It's got an X mount, which enables me just to take this off and mount it on a different rifle. It would even go on the barrel of a shotgun as well. This one's excellent. I've got this one fitted with a pressure switch. So the switch goes into the back of the flashlight and using a little bit of Velcro, I've attached the pressure switch there. And what that enables me to do is really keep my hands on the rifle set. And the only thing I'm moving is my thumb to turn that lamp on and off. 
That's it there. And if I press that three times quickly, it goes on to a strobe as well. Very, very accessible. You don't have to have the pressure switch on. It does come with an ordinary end, which I'll show you in a minute on another rifle. But that is an excellent setup. And this one would be used more for short exposure targets, rabbit shooting on a night, where you're just quickly acquiring a target, bang, another target, bang, another target, bang. That's the beauty of the semi-auto. And because it's got a silencer, it's extremely quiet. It's whisper quiet, this one. So you're just quickly shooting target, 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 target. It's a very, very good one for nighttime shooting. And this flashlight is approximately 950 lumens. It does have different power settings, but I can't see the point in having it on half power or medium power. It doesn't have such a tight center to the beam as the clue light, but you don't really want that for short range, short exposure shooting. You want a slightly broader beam, and that's what this offers me. I wouldn't use this one on the one I was using for long range because it was light up too much area. This one, as I said, is anything up to 50, 60 yards, although you can get target ID out to, I think, two or 300 yards. On this particular setup, though, 50, 60 yards on a night is all I would be using it for. And actually, before I put this on my other rifle, I just want to mention that it does actually come with a diffuser cap, which goes on here which diffuses the light. So if you'd wanted to use it indoors or in woodland, where ordinarily you'd be getting a lot of reflected light back from surfaces, that minimizes that happening. I'll give a full rundown of this particular flashlight and all the kit that comes with it in a future video because it does have quite a lot of different, um, different aspects to this one. So I won't cover them in here, I'll just try and rattle through this one. So we'll change the mount and we'll put this on a different rifle. Right, so we've taken the pressure switch off, just putting the ordinary end on. And I'm also going to change the mount as well. There's no tools necessary for this. Right, so we've got the standard mount, and the idea behind this one is, you would fit that underneath your scope. But the reel on my air rifle is actually too narrow. I think it's only 11 mil. it needs to be... 19 mil um, so it doesn't fit on there but that's the idea of it anyway that would fit underneath your scope but seeing as my particular scope on here is a 30 mil tube it's too big for this if you've got a 25 mil tube it's going to fit no problem and luckily on this particular rifle I've got a rail underneath so that just attaches to there but um, this is really a much shorter range rifle. And that fits very, very well on there. You could put the pressure switch on this. And that's just another way to fit that. Very, very secure under there, but there's no reason why you couldn't put it underneath your scope. But as I say, my tube is too big, it won't fit under my scope. Now if you're thinking, I don't really want the flashlight under there, and if it won't fit under your scope, simply swap it for that X mount, put it on your barrel of a normal rifle or on the side of this one and you're back in business, really really simple take it off, stick it on another one it's a very good mount this and it's got powerful magnets but they're coated with like a, a rubbery sort of like a jacket of some sort it means it's not going to scratch your rifle I'm going to step it way down now, and although this might look like a Colt 1911 semi-automatic pistol, it's actually an air pistol. I'll just prove it to you there, just before anybody in the UK gets the knickers in a knot, because we are not allowed to have semi-automatic pistols in the UK. Most definitely an air pistol. There you go, look in, you can see where the little pellet goes. And on this one, if you remember seeing a previous video of mine, I've actually fitted a tiny little uh, little flashlight here. I think it's about 200 lumens. And this one charges up through a USB. And how I fitted that one is with Velcro. That sticky Velcro. I've put the furry side on here so it's not going to pick up any muck. I've put the hooky side on here. By turning the end of this, 
turn that very powerful little flashlight on, stick it on there, and you're shooting in abandoned buildings, close quarters. This is really a very, very short range option. I mean, you wouldn't ordinarily hunt with this, even in a you know, like a post-apocalyptic situation or something. It would be a last choice. But it's there if necessary, and air pellets are very, very cheap and plentiful. So it is an option. If you want it to shoot pigeons in barns and so on, it will do it. It's quite powerful. It's uh, just short of six feet pounds. Which doesn't sound like much, but that is the legal limit for air pistols in the UK. Very well balanced. I've got a Hogue grip on. Rubberized grip from Hogue. Very, very nice. Again, I'll put that in the video description. The wooden grip just didn't feel as nice. This one allows for a little bit more accuracy. And this is a, a really excellent air pistol. Probably, I'll go out on a limb and say it's probably the best spring air pistol you can get. Now this little light under here is very, very bright, as I say, perfect for close quarters. Um, this one was from Gear Best. I did a review on it, but I'll put a, a link to that in the video description. If you didn't want this little light under the pistol, you could take it off. And you could go with this lad again, with that X mount, under there. There you go. Or, you put it on the top. It's not as stable on the top though, because it's been a little bit top heavy, it's better underneath. If you did want to put it on the top, and as long as you're gentle, you can shoot with it on the top. And you can actually see underneath the mount as well. Very well designed that way for use with open sights. I'll prefer to use it underneath though. It's a lot more stable there, it's not going to go anywhere, whereas if you put it on the top, It'll work its way down, it's, you know, it's not likely to fall off, but um, it's definitely not as good as if it's under there. It's very secure under there. Actually, I've made a mistake with this. It isn't 200 lumens. I think I said 200 lumens. It's actually 130 lumens, which from this tiny little flashlight is incredible. 130 is still bright enough for shooting indoors and at very, very close range. What was confusing me is this one that I was going to show you. This is the through night. Archer 1A. This one takes a single AA battery and that one again has different power settings up to 200 lumens. So if you want it to go all tactical with your air pistol you can do but you're not going to hit a thing. Not so bad if you've got a semi-automatic pistol and you've got numerous shots you can afford to miss with your first one and then rattle a, rattle a few more off to empty the mag. With a standard flashlight, it is possible to lamp with it, but you're going to really have to get somebody else to hold it. Imagine trying to hold this whilst you're also trying to hold your rifle securely and keep the, the flashlight on the target. It's not ideal. For shooting with a rifle, you really need something that's fixed. Taking the ability to use it for lamping out of the equation, this is actually an excellent little flashlight. I'll do a review on that in a later video as well because that's a belt of probably one of the best EDC flashlights you can get. Exceptionally well made, very bright. I'll not go into any more detail. You'll see that in the review video. And if you want to turn night into day, you can go with this. This is the Through Night TN36-UT. It's the upgraded version of the old TN36, which I've done a review of, I think last year or the year before. You can see it in the product review playlist. This one is even brighter. It's over 7,000 lumens, which is absolutely ridiculous to generate that sort of light from something so tiny. And this one takes four 18650 batteries. Again, it's got variable light outputs, it's got a strobe, but this literally turns night into day. It's not perfect for lamping though, but you want a, a slightly tighter beam for lamping. It just lights up everything. If you quickly want to scan a field and see everything that's in the field, use this. But again, it's something you can't really hold at the same time as holding your rifle. 
so it's not ideal for shooting purposes unless you have somebody else holding it whilst you're using the rifle then it becomes useful it's got very good run time it's shock proof it's waterproof overall an excellent excellent flashlight very very expensive but well worth it definitely the most expensive flashlight I've ever bought but it's a real belter it's a good one and this is gonna last many many years I will review this in a future video once I've used it a little bit more I never like to review anything unless I've actually used it for a prolonged period so please bear with me I haven't had this particular one very long but I just couldn't believe that it would be even more powerful than the original TN36 because that one was just ridiculous I mean at my place I've got about two acres I can literally light up the whole lot when it's on high power it's phenomenal now for those of you who are interested I'll just show you what an 18650 battery looks like that's it there it's like a double A on steroids and that's a high capacity battery very very good for situations that would ordinarily drain standard batteries and these are becoming more popular now certainly very very popular in flashlights and most of the best ones do have them in and just as an example of runtime this one at 950 lumens will give you an hour's worth of continuous use which is more than a night's worth of lamping because you're literally just switching the lamp on scanning finding a target bang lamp off it's not on continuously there you go that other end cap's been taken off pressure switch end cap put on and fitted in less than a minute very very versatile very very good and just like the through nights this one's shockproof waterproof comes with a five-year guarantee etc 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 very very high quality flashlight very very suitable for lamping and really it's amazing the way that battery technology and LED technologies come on in the last five or ten years or even in the last two years you know the power of beam that's able to be thrown out by these really pretty small flashlights is phenomenal you know only ten years ago you'd be lugging a big battery around with you in fact in my lamp and guide where I talk through the various techniques involved in nighttime shooting I'm actually using a huge battery it must weigh about five kilos or something it's a lead acid battery with a huge lamp that fits on here it's ridiculous compared to what's available now so if you're still using that old gear my advice would be just scrap it this is so much better you definitely won't regret upgrading and dragging yourself into the 21st century took me a while to do it so glad I did well hope you've enjoyed this video that was just a, a rundown of the, the gear that I have on my various rifles and hopefully you've enjoyed it and if you have hit the thumbs up share it wherever you want I'm not on Facebook or Twitter or any of those social my well, so-called social networks so if you want to share it anywhere on there any groups or whatever be my guest thanks very much for watching I'll see you in the next video